we are looking at verse number 7 from chapter 1 the sage ashtavakra says you are the solitary witness of all that is forever free your only bondage is not seeing this so we covered the first part yesterday let's look at this line today your only bondage is not seeing this every line is so strong isn't it because he doesn't deal in relatives at all <laughs> just very absolute your only bondage is not seeing this so if you are the solitary witness of all that is and you are forever free already he's saying forever free then how can one that is forever free have a bondage at all so what is it implying there it must be implied there that so if you are forever free then the bondage must be a pretense must be a pretend bondage so when we pretend ourselves like he said earlier the dropping of the illusion is only the dropping of the idea of being a person therefore our only bondage is to not come to this recognition not allow this recognition that I am the solitary witness of all there is and pretend as if I am not this and this refusal this pretense is our only bondage therefore satsang is for this pretend bondage it is a pretend game to get rid of the pretend bondage you see? but from the perspective of a person it all seems very real you see? So as the recognition is coming as the conditioning is dropping you will wonder what all of this was for what is all of this about <laughs> the seeming journey that seems to take years and years you see? I wonder but it has always been so obvious I have never been this person you see? what is it that I used to struggle with and say this is too strong this is too much like this I am too attached to this I cannot even find that one now who can be attached you see? because the only attachment is the this myth you see? this myth of bondage therefore you are forever free as long as we are pretending to be separate we are pretending not to be this solitary witness of all that is till then this seeming game will continue okay so verse 8 is the thought i am the doer is the bite of a poisonous snake mm -hmm. To know I do nothing is the wisdom of faith. Be happy. <laughs> the thought I am the doer is the bite of a poisonous snake. So often we've spoken about this that one of the strongest legs of the ego is this sense of doership. And you'll find it ludicrous and hilarious at some point because you will find that. I cannot find who is the doer and yet I have the sense so what should I do next what am I doing and based upon the seeming doing that I am doing I can feel pride or guilt uh, and what the seeming doing of another we can feel anger uh, all kinds of projections can go on them because of their seeming doership you see? so like we were saying earlier that the recognition that this consciousness is the one doer and one experiencer is the dissolution of this false idea that I am the doer in a personal sense the thought I am the doer is the bite of a poisonous snake to know I do nothing is the wisdom of faith be happy but what is the way around this doership question? It will not, the debate about free will versus God's will will not end unless we first try and understand whose free will would it be. Mm -hmm. 
And then when this is inquired into, we find there is nobody here that can have a free will. Nobody can have a free will, because no person exists. So free will actually is the pretend will, is the idea of the individual will. You see? And this individual will implies that there must be an individual here, but we find it. When we look even in this phenomenal realm, we find only this body here. You see? And this body is not interested in most of the things we are doing. What is there for the body in satsang? <laughs> so the body is not the doer, the body is not seeking freedom. The body is not even seeking security. You see? So from this perspective, it is seen that, as the sage said, to know I do nothing is referring to what? This idea of personhood does nothing. So then, who is the doer? You can either say that nobody, because nothing is actually being done, or we can say that which is here, the sense of existence or God, consciousness. This must be the one doer. And who could be the experiencer of God's doing? Many times we pray as if God is going to do something, but it is, has to be for me. Or God must take care of my life. Or God must lead my life to a particular outcome. So this is also what I call the half surrender. So if God is the one doer, then can there be a separate experiencer? Cannot be. So then this consciousness is the one doer, one experiencer. And as the sages have said, this consciousness itself is the projector, it is the light, it is the screen. It is the movie, it is the characters, it is the script, it is the director, everything. <laughs> and this consciousness is moving this entire manifest creation according to its own will. This is God's will. So to do this, to know I do nothing is the wisdom of faith. So it's to see it like this, that this God, this consciousness is the mover and the experiencer of the universe. You see, then to see this itself is faith. That which runs the universe is also running this life. To see this is faith. Verse number nine is that a single understanding, single understanding, I am the one awareness, consumes all suffering in the fire of an instant. A single understanding, I am the one awareness, consumes all suffering in the fire of an instant. So, this understanding sounds like a master key. Because if I just know this, I am the one awareness, it will consume all my suffering in the fire of an instant. You see? So, but who comes to satsang, who does not know that we say this every day, I am the one awareness, is it the end of suffering? <laughs> so then what is the contradiction? You see? What is the contradiction? The contradiction is that just as a concept, you see, this even this concept, although very beautiful and poetic, I am the one awareness, is not enough to come to the end of suffering. So therefore, when the sage says understanding, he is talking about the direct recognition of this truth. You see? Coming to this seeing, coming to this pure recognition of the Self. I am the one awareness. You see? 
where even these words fade away even these words are not needed there i am the one awareness awareness does not need these words so as the being is coming to this recognition that i am this one awareness then this is truly the end of suffering you see so if you were to look at this term understanding it must mean that this is clearly recognized you see but even in this recognition which many of us in satsang have had is it still the end of suffering you see <laughs> many times it isn't in fact most times it isn't because the understanding must also contain you see the dropping of that which is false understanding that's why i said a single understanding i am the one awareness so to come to this recognition non conceptually as a living experience and that's why we have the pointers are you aware now and who is aware of this awareness to bring us to this recognition you see but the recognition does not truly convert into the true understanding unless that which is false and conceptual is also dropped see so both the recognition and the dropping of the conditioning is contained here you see and it's important to see that the sage says in the fire of one instant because when i say dropping of the conditioning it can seem like now we are talking about the realm of time you see but even the conditioning has to be dropped now yeah. must be dropped now as we are allowing these thoughts to come and go it is so simple actually it can seem like now i have a big task i have to recognize and i have to drop the conditioning so i have a lot of work to do actually it is nothing it is just to use these pointers am i aware now who is aware of this awareness i am you see and then just simply allowing everything to come and go our thoughts our emotions everything that is coming and going in this realm is allowed to come and go at its, at its own pace without attaching to it you see so this when it says a single understanding i am the one awareness also implies that i am not an object within the world i am not the body i am not this phenomenal uh, world and to see that i must be this one awareness is the true understanding and right now you are free yeah. right now you are free in the fire of this instant so don't wait for some holy instant this is that uh, also the sage reiterates that i am the one awareness and we've been stretching on this or stressing on this over and over in the past few weeks so the recognition is that it is i which is this awareness so it's very important to see it like that so it is not that awareness it is not a distant awareness it is not a experience that you had of awareness it is to see that awareness is i verse 10 you are the unbounded awareness bliss supreme bliss <laughs> okay so there is a hyphen so you are the unbounded awareness hyphen bliss supreme bliss then hyphen again so 
So, this awareness, we cannot find a boundary, we cannot find a start or an end. It is not contained within any phenomena. It is not even contained within this phenomenal realm. That is why when I ask you, where are you really? Are you here in this universe at all? Or are you just witnessing this universe? You see? So then you see that I am not in this universe. My I am is the universe itself. You see? My being contains this universe, but my truest nature, my true self, is not to be found in this realm. And in seeing it like this, we see that there has been this sense of trying to discover the self as if we'll find it as an object within this realm or within the body or within the mind. But it is not to be found here. Who witnesses the realm, who witnesses the body, who witnesses the mind, you see, that is already what you are and you have never left this position. You see. So you are this unbounded awareness. And as this recognition is coming, then bliss can arise in service to it. But for now, you don't be concerned about the byproduct. Because the recognition that I am this unbounded awareness is the important thing. So, you are this unbounded awareness in which the universe appears like the mirage of a snake in a rope. Be happy. Okay. Okay. So, in, within this awareness, the universe appears. What form does the universe take? The most primal form of the first appearance is what? Is it? Uh, existence, yes. So, we experience this nothingness in the sleep. And then, this primal, primordial appearance comes. The primordial vibration, which is I am. It's also called Om. And in the light of this primordial vibration, the universe seems to exist. Seems to exist. You see? He said the. <laughs> he says, can you talk a bit more about the bliss? <laughs> you are called the as the bliss, I would not say that. Any attachment for the enjoyment from this world ceases to exist when you see that you yourself is bliss. I would not like to say that because then what happens is that we are searching for the byproduct more than what we are truly recognizing for ourselves. So even when this recognition could be happening that this witnessing is I, this awareness is I, then the mind could say, but hello, where is the bliss? You know, <laughs> are you truly coming to the true seeing? Because they said it's going to be supremely blissful. You see? So then we don't give it any space to unfold itself, the recognition. You see? Because immediately we go back to this sense of wanting something though the seeking of the bliss, which will then uh, supposedly take over, I mean, make everything else seem uh, tasteless, you see, all other worldly experiences. The important is that you are the unbounded awareness, you see, which is accompanied by uh, bliss as its servant, in a way. Actually, even that would not be completely accurate, because we have to say that it is this unbounded awareness manifesting in this form of consciousness, which when remains unassociated, you see, 
when this is not associated personally in any way then is completely followed around by love peace joy bliss so this in this awareness we saw that the universe appears and then he says like the mirage of a snake in a rope so all of this is one big seeming so from the perspective of awareness nothing ever really happened the mirage never really existed but it can seem to be there you see and when the desert and you're searching for water it can seem like the mirage is real just like when we consider ourselves to be an object it can seem like this world of objects is real you see but this mirage is like the mirage of a snake in a rope so it could be late in the evening and you see a snake you see a rope on the side of the road and if the light is dim then it will feel like it is a snake it could it has happened to many you see so like this mirage the universe is appearing and like the mirage it is when we truly look it's a beautiful example of the mirage isn't it so when we truly get close and we look then we don't see the mirage anymore you see so when we truly look at who we are we find that we are this unbounded awareness <laughs> 